Joe Biden. Ineffective. How does it feel? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Later this year, there will be a presidential election between Joe Biden, the incumbent, and the challenger, Donald Trump, who is looking to return for a second term. Unsurprisingly, both are narcissists, albeit of different sub-schools. As I've explained before, politics is particularly attractive to narcissists by virtue of the fact of two things. Firstly, it is an environment which very much caters to the prime aims. By gaining political power, this enables the assertion of control over millions of people domestically and potentially billions of people worldwide. It allows the receipt of massive amounts of fuel, access to lots of character traits and residual benefits. Accordingly, wherever somebody fits in in the political landscape, there is the opportunity for the maximization and improvement of the receipt of the prime aims. You don't have to be president to benefit from the political environment, being a senator, being an MP, wherever it might be around the world. It provides an opportunity to control people using political power and influence, to draw fuel and gain access to character traits and residual benefits. Secondly, the fact that it attracts so many narcissists in the first place means that invariably you need to be a narcissist to cope with the environment. You need to be able to stamp on the fingers of those beneath you and drag those off the ladder above you. It is effective to proceed without any kind of conscience, guilt or remorse. To have that thickened skin so that you have your main eye, your eyes on the main prize. To ensure that your opponents are crushed in the dust whilst you get to the top. Thus, because it attracts so many narcissists, it's almost the case to succeed, although not entirely always the case, but generally that you need to be a narcissist to get ahead within that environment. And thus, we have another instance where two are fighting against one another. Now, ordinarily, in order for the narcissist to come out on top, there are two approaches that are available. The first is to highlight how brilliant you are to ensure that your successes are heralded, to enable your voting public to know of the changes that you have effected, the improvements that you've made to their lives, the brilliance that you exhibit, the wars that you might have won, the wars that you might have ended, the jobs that you have created, the reduction in poverty, environmental improvements, you will look to herald your achievements in order to persuade people to vote for you. And that's one method of asserting control. The other method is to do down your opponent, to chop them off at the knees, to criticise them, to issue a smear campaign against them. Not focusing so much on what you've done, but on what they have done. Pointing out their failings, pointing out what might happen if they get into office, issuing the... the danger alert in relation to this person, focusing on the problems that they will create should they be voted in, so public, don't vote them in. Those, effectively, are the two main options that are available with regard to seeking to win an election. So far, Biden had tried heralding his achievements, but that has proven to be ineffective. How so? Well, he has consistently been behind in the polls. Not by a huge margin, but nevertheless still behind. Thus, it's the case that he has allowed the attacks to continue against Donald Trump. He hasn't commented particularly much about them. He's allowed other commentators to do that. He hasn't issued much by way of his own observations about it. Thus, that's part of his contemptuous view of Trump. But the point is, what he has been doing has shifted from trying to rely upon his heralding of his own achievements, which has proven ineffective, and instead then relying upon trying to do down his opponent, which, interestingly enough, has also similarly been ineffective. Thus, no matter what Joe Biden has attempted to utilise 
by way of talking about what he has achieved or by allowing prominence to the attacks on the Donald Trump and all of the controversy that surrounds his opponent, neither has actually proven effective in getting him into a lead. The latest polls show that as of May 30th, Trump was on 41.2%, Biden was on 39.5%, giving Trump a lead of plus 1.7 percentage points, and Kennedy was on 98 If we go back in time into March, the difference was two percentage points, with Biden on 39.7, Trump on 41.7. That was at March the 1st. During that time, all the way through March, Trump has remained in the lead. Sometimes two percentage points, dipping down at one point to 0.9, 0.8, going back up to 2.2. And then once into April, Kennedy was on 9.4, Biden was on 41, Trump was on 43.1. Thus giving Trump a lead of 2.1. And through April, Trump remained in the lead. His lead was cut to 0.7, 0.6 at one point. Just at one, and then at one point on April the 22nd, just 0.3 percentage points. So his lead slimmed. But then, as we've gone into May, it started to increase again, moving closer to one percentage point, bringing us to where we are today at 1.7. It's a slender lead, but it's a lead. And the point is, it has remained a lead throughout the last three months, notwithstanding the efforts of Biden to try and do down his opponent. In terms of popularity, how popular is Joe Biden? This has been taken from a range of different polls. Back in 2021, 53.1% of people approved of him, 30.2% disapproved. And he maintained a positive approval rating until September the 2nd, 2021, when disapproval was greater than approval by 0.4 percentage points. And over nearly the last three years, again demonstrating his ineffectiveness, his disapproval has actually grown. By July the 5th, 2022, it had reached 18.3 percentage points. It then dropped, getting into September, down to 7.7 and then has continued slowly growing again until it stands at 18 percentage points as of May the 30th. Disapproval at 56.3, approval at 37.8. Thus, he remains ineffective in terms of his overall popularity, which of course is problematic for him and shows ineffectiveness. Now, how does that feel for him? Because naturally, these optics will be relayed to him. It's a threat to control. And the fact that he's not been able to shift it, either by heralding his own achievements or by allowing the continued attacks against Donald Trump, almost creates a position of impotence for him. It doesn't send him into crisis, but it regularly causes a problem for him because the news that he's behind Trump notwithstanding the tribulations and trials that Donald Trump has experienced, shows that he's got a significant problem and he has a daily threat to his control, which will result undoubtedly in Biden lashing out at other people and blaming them, urging them to do something to change the position, criticising his advisers because, after all, it's not his fault. For him, he basically has a daily, daily diet of discomfort occasioned by this polling, which he can't seem to shift to get in front of Donald Trump. Although he's not far behind, he is behind. And this is, without, this is notwithstanding his attempts to tell the nation, look at all the good things that I've done. The nation's largely unmoved. Then, well, let them see what a villain Donald Trump is. Largely unmoved. This ineffectiveness is a considerable threat to Joe Biden's control and his way of dealing with it isn't to try and do something himself 
but instead, typical of the narcissist, will be to blame those around him. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.